You guys have been asking for this fast as possible episode for the better part of a year, so I guess it's time to deliver. For starters, if you don't know what anti-aliasing is at all yet, or you need a quick refresher, please check out our overview video here. Or if you've disabled annotations, then use the link in the video description. Moving along, all methods of anti-aliasing fall into one of two groups. The first increases the sample rate, which means it renders the scene at what is effectively a higher resolution than down samples to the display resolution, effectively smoothing lines. And the second blurs edges or other contrasts due to shading and textures and is known as post-AA or post-processing, since the blurring occurs directly after the render process. MSAA and SSAA both fall under the first category. Super sampling anti-aliasing, also known as full scene anti-aliasing, or FSAA, was the first type of AA available with early video cards. It is best used on photorealistic images as it makes them appear softer and more lifelike, but for line art or diagrams, it actually decreases the quality and makes them appear fuzzy, especially for horizontal and vertical lines. SSAA has a huge computational cost, so most real-time applications like games have moved away from this method. Typically, FSAA goes up to 4x, but if you have horsepower to spare, there's a modified version for SLI users which can crank up the sample rate up to 16x or even 128x if you're running quadros in SLI, just in case your neck gets tired and you want to put them in your computer or something. MSAA, or multi-sampling anti-aliasing, is similar to FSAA, but it only super samples the edges of polygons and calculates textures once per pixel, which significantly cuts down on the required processing power. The main downside, however, is that it doesn't prevent aliasing that appears within rendered polygons caused by blending textures or pixel shaders. After a few more advances in supersampling techniques, CSAA, or Coverage Sample Anti-Aliasing, was released along with the GeForce 8 series graphics cards from NVIDIA. It produced images that rivaled the quality of 16x MSAA, while only causing a slightly higher performance hindrance than 4x MSAA. It accomplished this by simply detecting whether or not a polygon is present, and then using that information to judge where it needs to use supersampling. So let's move over to the second type of anti-aliasing, post-AA or post-processing. A great example of this is FXAA or Fast Approximate Anti-Aliasing. This technique was developed by Timothy Lotz under NVIDIA. It gets rid of jaggies or jagged edges by smoothing the edges on each pixel on the screen directly after each pixel is rendered, including those in blended textures and pixel shaders. The smoothing directly after pixels are rendered part is huge, as most anti-aliasing techniques have to analyze a 3D model as a whole to smooth the edges rather than smoothing each pixel individually. FXAA judges where an edge is by comparing the depth between two pixels and smooths their edges according to their relative depth. Unfortunately, this technique does make some textures appear soft and must be applied before heads-up display elements are rendered so that they remain sharp and clear. FXAA was such an improvement over previous techniques that Kotaku actually claimed that FXAA made all previous forms of anti-aliasing obsolete with its speed and accuracy. NVIDIA has also since added TXAA, or temporal anti-aliasing, which is a film-style anti-aliasing technique designed to reduce temporal aliasing, crawling and flickering scene in motion when playing games, and this is a very complex form of AA which combines downsampling and blurring. It uses a lot more performance than FXAA, its implementation differs from game to game, and it's only available on GPUs from the Kepler family or higher. Well, Linus, you might be saying, this is all well and good, but what if I'm a member of Team Red? Or what if my graphics card doesn't natively support some of the AA methods you've mentioned in this video? Well, that's a great question. Not every graphics card has native support for each method of anti-aliasing, but you can usually add one in yourself. It won't always work as easily or as well as a developer-implemented solution, but you can actually download plenty of drivers that will add in anti-aliasing techniques, some of which are more advanced than what the developer may have added. One such solution is SMAA, or Subpixel Morphological Anti-Aliasing. This combines morphological anti-aliasing, a post-processing technique that identifies aliasing based on patterns and blends colors around them to diminish that aliasing, with super sampling like MSAA or SSAA to sharpen the entire seen. It is natively supported in some games, and many users have seen marked improvements in visual quality when adding SMAA to games like Skyrim. Many of them claim that it provides the smoothness of FXAA without the performance hit, but of course your mileage may vary. So there you have it. As usual, it comes down to personal preference, and you'll want to do some experimentation to see what works best for your eyes on your rig in your games. Happy fragging. Speaking of fragging,
lynda.com. Well, I guess lynda.com can't really help you with fragging, but they can help you with a wide variety of other skills. They have thousands of courses with new ones added every week, and each course is taught by an industry expert, so you know that the information provided is correct and relevant. Whether you want to learn about programming, photography, or video editing so that you can create awesome content like what we release here on TechQuickie, although if you compete with us, we'll come and we'll cut you, uh, lynda.com has you covered. You take each course at your own pace, so whether you're breezing through four lectures a day or only fitting in one a week, you can expand your knowledge on your own schedule. Plans start at a very reasonable $25 per month, which is less than a dollar a day for all you math whizzes out there. But if you want to try out lynda.com completely free, they're offering a seven-day trial to all TechQuickie viewers. So head over to lynda.com slash TechQuickie to check that out. Guys, thanks for watching. Like if you liked, dislike if you disliked, leave a comment if you have suggestions for future Fast as Possibles, and as always, don't forget to subscribe.